How's it going everyone, and welcome back to another Left 4 Dead 2 Character Files. For today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the raunchiest special infected in Left 4 Dead 2, the Spitter. I mean, just look at this thing. It literally looks like a southern tramp that's dope off meth and ketamine. I remember first seeing the Spitter for the first time loading up Left 4 Dead 2, and that intro cutscene plays, and the Spitter is just looming over Rochelle and Nick, just dripping that gauze everywhere. It just gave me the heebie-jeebies as a kid growing up. So without further ado, let's investigate exactly what makes it spitter a spitter. <laughs> Given the spitter's rough appearance, she has a quite interesting anatomy, something similar to the creeper from Minecraft. One of the first things you may notice about the spitter upon first glance is that her jaw is practically non-existent. Many believe that this is due to the strong stomach acids that the spitter secretes, but we'll get to that later. She has her hair done in pigtails, and according to the in-game cutscenes, and her character model, the spitter can have either blue or green eyes. The spitter wears a dingy ass white bra or tank top, whichever you think it is, some dirty capris, and she doesn't wear any shoes. Honestly, the spitter looks like one of those natives you find living in the Appalachians of West Virginia. If you don't believe me, just give it a quick Google search. But the outfit just says it all, especially the lack of shoes. I mean, the hunter even wears yes. shoes. Like, come on now, that's, that's, there's no excuse for that. That's how you get ringworm on your feet. Now, the spitter is known for doing just that, spitting this green acidic goo all over the place, creating a dangerous hazard for the survivors. Now, many speculate exactly how the spitter managed to obtain the ability to spit up such acid, but many agree that the green flu infection may have mutated the acids in her stomach and basically made it well, super acidic to the point where it literally melted up her insides, hence why she is missing her jaw and her belly flops around all over the place. The acids will also leak out of the spitter's mouth while she is walking around and as well as when she dies, she'll explode into a green acidic mess. Similar to like when the boomer is killed, <laughs> he'll done. explode and his vomit will spread all over the place attracting special infected. I should also note that the spitter's acids also glow. This makes it easier to spot the spitter from a distance as well as any piles of acid she may have spit up. It's believed that this happens because the spitter is actually incapable of controlling when and how much of the acids her body creates, so she has to constantly release the acids or else she can explode. Taking a little bit closer of a look, something that I never noticed before because I mean who really wants to get more up close and personal with this thing than when they don't really have to? you'll see that the spitter actually has rings on her fingers. And if you look a little bit closer, you'll make up the ring that she has on here, and this finger here is the ring finger, meaning that prior to becoming a literal meat bag of acid, the spitter lived a relatively happy life, finding marriage, and probably even having a little family of her own, all of which may have been utterly destroyed during the apocalypse, but hey, it goes to show that at some point in time, that times were much simpler before the world was plunged into zombie chaos. Complete side note, but if you were to ask me, I think if zombie relationships were a thing, I'd totally ship the Charger and Spitter. I mean look, they look so cute together. For this next segment, I'm actually going to switch it up, and unlike my other videos, since the special infected don't really have much of a backstory, or if any backstory at all, I thought I'd just go a little bit more into detail about the character and its overall uses when compared in the game modes. For majority of the game modes like Campaign and Survival, the Spitter has the same abilities and attributes. However, its uses change depending on the game mode you're playing. What I mean by this is, while playing versus mode for example, while playing the spitter, you should be trying to help the other infected deal faster damage when they manage to snag a survivor. Whether that be throwing up acid when a hunter or smoker is someone caught, or spitting a goo pile for a jockey to drag a survivor into, or preventing easy revives by spitting a goo pile on a downed survivor. Not many people that I see playing spitter actually do this, they usually just run around and spit acid piles everywhere and not making themselves much of a handy infected. When if you util utilize the spitter properly while playing versus, you can actually make some pretty good plays. However, these motives change ever so slightly when playing scavenge mode. If you aren't too familiar with scavenge mode, then lucky for you because you can watch this video here that I made where I go a little bit more into detail on scavenge mode and explain what it is and some strategies that you could try out so you can always win. Alright, so in scavenge mode, the spitter's objectives retain relatively the same. Although, now you can destroy dropped gas canisters that the survivors may have piled up for some easy points, or if they dropped it when they got scooped up by a charger. 
You won't believe how many people don't know this, even though it's literally a tip displayed on the loading screens every now and then. Every now and then, I'll boot up a game of scavenge and find myself having to remind someone that's playing Spitter yes. that they can destroy no. the gas cans after the survivors oh, pick them up and the put can. them back down. And tip, those are the only ones the Spitter can destroy. They can't destroy the ones they haven't touched yet. The easiest way to tell which ones are destroyable and the ones that aren't is that the destroyable gas cans have a yellow outline, while the indestructible ones have a white outline. I'm hoping with this new knowledge, next time you find yourself playing scavenge with your buddies, try and coordinate some mean plays, especially with Spitter, and there's no reason why you can't take a dub. Alright guys, that's it for today's character file. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you're interested, you can check out that scavenge game mode video, where I explain my winning strategies, or you can check out my other character files on the rest of the Left 4 Dead roster. Also, only a fraction of you guys are subscribed, so if you're liking the Left 4 Dead content and would like to see more, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Cartridge rules up, it's not that I can hear them at the door. Do not disturb, hang